So the typical question I get, how should I play and how should I react when I get that isolated pawn? That's what we're going to discuss today. So as we can see, the pawn on d5 is considered to be an isolated pawn because there are no pawns next to that pawn. So there is no pawns on c file or e file. So it's not supported by any pawn. And what should we, how should we proceed? What, what should we actually do? What should be our plan for that position? Uh, it's clear that black is trying to get into the end game or as a general plan for black in this position, like who does not have any isolated pawns, all the pawns are quite nicely collected, like up here and over there. Um, wants to just to exchange all the pieces on the board, including the queens, the rooks, and so on, and nicely convert transpose to the uh, end game where pawn on d5 will be extremely weak, and until the rest of the game, white will have to defend that pawn with the king. So, what should we actually do when we are on the white side? When we have isolated pawn, our main idea is to create some strong attack, especially in that position up here in the game, which was played against between the two really strong grandmasters, like Paul Karras and Tim Geller. Uh, we have the bishop up here, which is looking all the way to um, h7, as well as the Answer bishop on b2, so we get all the way to uh, g7. What can we see that we have two extremely nice and active bishops looking all the way to the king side, ready to attack, ready to be sacrificed, ready to crush the king side. So the last move made was queen to e7. Just as I said, black is trying to trade queens right now and trying to make this pawn quite miserable. Should we capture on e7 or should we keep our queen? Or should we try to escape from change? Now that we know that whenever we have isolated pawn, our goal is to checkmate as soon as possible, we should definitely keep the queens on the board. So what should we do next? Uh, we have a couple of options. Yes, um, again, we should not do queen e7 because after bishop e7, that pawn is quite easy reachable, like rook d8, and there is knight c4, and there is like more and more things coming and the bishop will be extremely happy to control that long diagonal and so on. So how should we stop this exchange? We have a couple of options here. We can do queen c2 unfortunately because then rook takes as well as queen d2 because then the bishop would take on d2. We still could do bishop to e4 or uh, knight to e5 or bishop e5. That would be my move candidate I would consider during the game. Again, since I know that I should not be trading queens when I do get isolated pawn, it happens quite often when you, uh, when you play uh, queen's gambit. Well, you should be a little bit careful with that. So first option would be bishop to e5. How good does that look? Like, well, after bishop e5, I'm pretty sure black could consider to play f6, which would push that bishop away. So let's say bishop would escape, um, say, bishop d4 or bishop b4. And I feel like we are back to the position we started. So after queen e2, bishop e2, black exactly achieved what they wanted. And even more, after that move, there is rook c2, which is a double attack to the bishop on e2 and rook on b2. So doesn't look like too too good to me. So um, I would definitely try to avoid moving bishop e5 because it just doesn't work. Uh, I still have two more moves to go over. Uh, there's another bishop e4 move, uh, but after f5, I feel like again we're going back. I do not want to lose the bishop on e4. I want to keep it on the board. So after bishop d3, queen um, takes bishop, bishop takes c2. So that's the, I think the goal is achieved for um, black at that point. Now again, if we move back all the way here, we still do have one option, which is knight to e5. Looks quite nicer to me. So again, if you're a attacking player just like me, like you always want to find a way to keep your bishops on the board, you need your bishops to checkmate. So um, knight to e5. Knight to e5 does prevent queen trade at the moment. But what if f6 just the same thing like they did before? Well, after f6, I would definitely consider not to move the knight. So um, it's not necessary right now. We can keep it on e5. But 
move is a queen h5. Why queen h5? Well, queen h5, I'm ready to checkmate. I'm ready to mate that king on g8 right now. So, what if black will actually fall for my trick and take on e5? Well, then I'm ready to mate. Okay. Um, now we have again two options, two ways to capture on h7 because h7 is attacked by the queen and the bishop. So, the bishop and the queen up here, both of those pieces are attacking. So which should you start? Typically, it should be the queen because, you know, it's well known that if the queen comes next to the king, it should be a checkmate. But, well, not always. It depends, right? So, um, if we start with the queen, queen takes h7, king still has an escape square, which is f7. And even there, if I try to check, I feel like the most I can get out of there, it's a perpetual. Well, after queen h7, king f7, I could still do bishop, f, uh, bishop g6. The king has one escape score, which is f6, right? Because e8 is taken by the bishop, as well as e6 is taken by the pawn. So really, I have one square. It does okay right now, so like one square up there. It's queen, uh, king f6, which still looks quite hopeless, honestly, for um, white, but... Uh, for, for white because white is definitely um, winning right now. I feel like maybe there's a four, so this is definitely a nice pin up here. So maybe I'm considering f takes e5 or I'm gonna like try to check me, try to trap the king, but it's still gonna be like you know, maybe another like five ten moves in the game. So if I really want to checkmate quick, I should look for a better opportunity. Now I am love this checkmate. Um, this kind of triangle checkmate. So what happens here? So the bishop takes on h7 would be actually the best option, not queen h7 for that position. So bishop h7, king h8, bishop g6, that would be a nice check to the king. And guess what? There's only one escape square, which is g8, but then you're mating on h7. Now, it's so, so important. I always tell it to my students, well, after this check, it's so, so important to keep your bishop on g6. Yes, I know our bishop can move all the way to d1, or like bishop d4, bishop d3. We have all those different options. But uh, honestly, the older we get and the more I play chess, it's 20 years by now, like, and the more I learn and the more except the fact that actually shorter bishop moves are way stronger typically than like when we assume that you know, we can move all the way to seven squares down there or like make a really long move. Now there's still long bishop moves in chess but um, it's really helpful to understand that shorter moves, shorter bishop moves are typically actually way more powerful than the longer one. Again, it depends on the position, but it's really helpful when you're attacking. Okay. Anyways, bishop g6, that checks and that checkmates. Now, if you would do something with bishop f5, the king could still escape to g8, and you know, we can do an easy check here, and we come back to the position before, and after king f6, king is still running away. Uh, we could still do um, bishop f5, king d8, we could still do bishop e6, and then there is no way to block this check and uh, I always say like whenever you're trying to check me try to bring your queen or the bishop as close as possible to the king so there will be no space between the king and um, the, uh, the attacking piece so for example up here to the bishop g6 it's really nice checking the king so after king to g8 um, this square is controlled like this is a really short move, but after that, it's queen h7 checking. Now, the game did not end up here. After queen to h5, black decided to take on e5. Um, black takes on e5 already knows, and we are checkmating, but like black decides, okay, I see the threat. What if I try to play g6? That's actually what happened back there in the game. Now, again, as I said before, I'm a little bishop person, like I like to keep my bishops on the board, and I feel kind of safe sacrificing my knights and pawns. It's not like I'm gonna sacrifice like all the knights during the each game, but if I have to, I would probably sacrifice the knight than the bishop because I really know that you need to keep your bishops there on the board. So uh, after g6, we basically have two choices. We, our queen is uh, in trouble, our knight is in trouble. So if we run away with a queen, our knight is gone. That's it. So 
it is gonna appear. So the other choice which we need to accept that okay, both of our pieces in danger, queen h5 and knight on e5. So what if we take right now? I think we have to because in any way we're losing the queen or the knight, so we have to do that now. So when the knight takes, one can take back. And then we have this of um, bishop takes g6. Again, I would not recapture with a queen because that would help black to block that check with a queen on g7. And again, king is not in danger. So again, do not try to check all the time. That's not a good thing. So like when you're sure it's a checkmate or you're sure like, like you're going to win something, that's fine. But when you're not really sure, try to think that check is equals to the checkmate. It's not the same thing. So like you like most of the times you want to avoid like checking so yeah bishop g6 is a stronger move because that controls f7 and h7 here so those two uh and after queen g7 we just take the rook up to d3 we definitely have two different choices one is rook d3 and another one is rook all the way to d4 i really like rook d4 i would love to get it like all the way to h4 maybe like like g4 and like try to create some threats up here but i have to go for rook d3 because if i do rook d4 like yeah there is always a way i mean to counterattack or to try to think how could they stop our rook from getting there and in that position that would be rook to c4 the rook is defended by the knight so if i would take knight would take back and uh definitely uh white is not getting any checkmate even more like at that moment white is losing because they're down a piece so i have to look for the safer but nicer option for myself so which is Rook to d3. After I move rook to d3, there is no way to stop except of maybe bishop a6, but I don't think we care much because after rook to d3, I have some nice discovered attacks all the way up here. So after rook to d3, uh, bishop move to d6, as we can assume, they're trying to prevent us from moving to d3. So, like, we're still hoping to get there. But no, there is a way. Like, and Paul Karras, the grandmaster from Estonia, very famous grandmaster. Found the best response in that position, which was an f4. f4 takes the bishop from controlling that square on g3, and it's a really nice move. It's kind of like interferes within the bishop and the rook right now. Now, queen to h8. Now, again, the same question we come going back to the what we started with should we trade queens or not? No, no, not just because we have isolated one, but because one, we are down a piece, down a piece. You don't want to trade when you are. Um, down the material, right? Again, it depends, but like you don't want to trade when you're attacking and you're down the material. Now, here we're definitely going to save the queen and we're going to move queen to g4, which would help us to control that file and which would allow us to move the bishop to different directions to try to do different checkmates and so on. So, uh, um, do not trade queens when you're down the material and when you're about to checkmate. You need your queen to checkmate, that's rule number one. So, bishop to c5. It's a check, we're not gonna complicate, it's a check, we're just gonna move away, like we're not gonna stop it with rook or like with the bishop up here. We need those pieces to check in. So king to h1, c7, and uh, now there is a nice checkmate which is coming off her bishop h7. I also do like that move bishop f7 a lot, because when the king takes, we can do uh, queen to a6, it's the king, say king to g7. That's my favorite checkmate. Uh, rook to g3, let's say king h6 or king h7. There are no way to stop the check, and that's where queen h3 is kind of queen and rook checkmate. My favorite one. So in the game, true, they made a different move, but it's still the same discovered and double attack. So after bishop h7, king f7, we are just nicely finishing the same way. So queen e6. Um, yeah, again, if king takes h7, we're gonna. Checkmate, queen and rook checkmate, controlling, no way to stop that right now. And then, and bishop h7, king a6, we do queen a6, king g7, check, here, and here we go, it's a nice checkmate. So guys, just a conclusion, whenever you get the isolated pawn, we do not be discouraged. It's just part of the game, it's just part of the another type of position, so definitely keep fighting. And just assume, like, when you do have that isolated pawn, you must be playing and you must be trying to attack and using your all resources. Try to trade pieces less when you have that isolated pawn. And when you are playing against isolated pawn, 
you are the one who needs to trade all the pieces on the board because you want to convert really quickly to the end game and just you know try to attack that pawn and try to force their king to stop and like to defend to defend that pawn. So, thank you.